The Yankee Clipper, now electrified, approaching the environs of New York, which means it will soon go underground because the tracks for miles proceed beneath traffic and beneath buildings of the metropolis. We pass into a subterranean world, a signal tower underground. Here, more than 600 trains a day are guided in and out over the 107 tracks of Grand Central Terminal. 28 up H. 28 up H. 18 out B. 18 out B. 34 up B. 34 up B. Put him on the outbound tower, see? 29 up I. 23 to way D. 23 to the way of D. Track G to track 40 with the clipper. G to 40 with the clipper. On time, as the train board indicates. Yankee Clipper. It's coming on the upper level. There are two levels of underground tracks for the trains that carry 42 million passengers in and out of Grand Central Terminal every year. machine bound for Rio. From the flat car that brought it to New York, the railroad delivers the consignment on a lighter to its berth aboard the ship. The railroad owns 42 of those ungainly barges with the big derricks. They're strong and sturdy. Some of them can be loaded with 500 tons of freight. <laughs> the tugboat? It's also railroad owned. The railroad owns 13 tugs. They're famous throughout New York Harbor. The railroad owns and operates many other pieces of marine equipment. And so the case of machinery is on its way to be stowed aboard ship and then south into the tropics past the equator to be put into service in the land of the Amazon. New England machines to modernize latitudes of jungle green. That's the bicycle bought by Auntie in Boston for her nephew in New York. It's to be delivered to the lucky lad by the railroad through its pickup and delivery system. This is another modern phase of railroad. This is a water gateway for the interchange of freight cars between railroads. New York, the East River, when freight cars from New England are destined for points outside of New England, they may come here. They're to go over the lines of other railroads. And how is the transfer affected? We see a water phase of operation that you might not readily associate with a railroad. A car ferry and the dock apron can be moved up and down to follow the tide. The car float arrives with cars from the New Jersey side. They're from points south and west and are destined for New England. Raw materials for the industries of New England. And the car float is locked to the dock apron.
standard steel freight cars roll onto the tracks of the float. Manufactured articles made in large part from raw materials brought previously into New England. On the other side of the river, they will roll similarly onto the tracks of the railroad that is to take them on to complete their journey to some point in this immense country of ours. New England carload lots bound for everywhere. This is a New Haven Rail Gateway up in New York State. It's another point where railroads meet and where freight cars are interchanged. Those are cars loaded with merchandise for New England, raw materials and perishable food. Packing house and dairy products from Chicago and Kansas City. Oranges and grapefruit from California and Arizona. Onions from Texas. Meat from Sioux City. Early morning at a New England city. Freight cars full of fresh food. The beginning of the day, the right time for food distribution. After cars are unloaded, they are pulled into the yards for inspection. Here a string of them are going to the yards to meet the keen eye of the inspector. Cars are carefully inspected at regular intervals. When something wrong is found, the car is tagged. Bad order, familiarly known as B.O. The car then goes to B.O. Brown's yard. Those are his real initials, appropriately. In the yard, light repairs are made. For heavy repairs, freight cars are brought to the back shops here. Wheels are pressed off the axles by the application of enormous pressure. Hundreds of tons. After being repaired to exacting standards of safety, Wheels are pressed back onto their axles under pressure. No bolts or screws needed to keep the wheel securely in place. Just that enormous pressure. These pictures have shown us vast magnitudes of material and work. They have revealed to us a complicated industrial system in action, a system of many interlocking parts, operation and maintenance, passenger and freight, carload and less than carload lots, steam and electrification, light repairs and heavy repairs. All these coordinated with a perfection of timing, the many parts working together harmoniously, a giant clockwork of transportation, an American railroad. All this is typical of the industrial genius of America. It is an example of that world important thing on which this nation and our brother nations must rely in a perilous war of worldwide scope. Our victory depends first of all on the American gift for making giant industrial systems of production and transport operate with an amount of efficiency that no other nation can match. Such is the larger meaning of these scenes of a great American railroad at work. The human factor is the true source of all the mechanical wonder. It is as New Haven President Palmer told us, people whose skill, devotion, courage, and strict adherence to the finest railroad practices have made possible this railroad's record of safety, efficiency, and progress.